In my last video on this channel, I had mentioned originally that the car only had a backup camera, but then when I put it in gear, I saw that it did have the full, uh, like a bird's eye view or surround vision camera. And then in the comments, somebody had commented about hitting the button with the P on it next to the shifter. And that's what would bring up the camera to the person that put that comment in there. Thank you very much, because I would like to be able to show that feature to my customer when they come pick up the BMW later today. The BMW is all cleaned up, ready to go. We're gonna park it up in the front spot here, right in front of the Schumacher uh, sign on the building, which is the best spot for really a photo op when you wanna take pictures of cars for Instagram or things like that. So we'll get it positioned nicely using our surround vision camera. All right. The BMW is all ready to go. It's all cleaned up, it's gassed. I'm gonna, again, familiarize myself with some of these buttons and knobs just so when they come in later, I can kind of explain some stuff to them or answer any questions that they may have when they're looking for certain features. In the meantime, I'm gonna give you a little update on new cars on the lot. The old day we talked about used. Today we'll talk about new. We're gonna highlight two vehicles that I have in stock at the moment. I'm gonna do a quick update on the Camry, the 2002 Toyota Camry. If you didn't see the video I uploaded yesterday, I did do back-to-back -back videos. I put one up Monday and I put one up Tuesday. We got a little project going on here today and one of them is the headlights it's just something that right now draws negative attention if we want to turn that into a positive this obviously with the hole in it is no good so we're gonna ditch this that Camry video is on the day of Dave channel I'm gonna put that link in the description of this video so if you want to go watch it you can click on that and watch it over there I have an update on that because I did post it to Facebook marketplace today The E-Ray that was here the other day is back, actually, because it was here the other day to schedule an oil change. Today, the oil change was completed. Gentleman's got his first 500 miles on it, enjoying it uh, very much. I talked to him a little bit. He's had numerous uh, Corvettes over the years, and I just, I still can't get over the carbon ceramic brakes. Huge rotors, Brembo calipers. Really just an awesome vehicle, you know, with the wide body. Black, not really my color on this type of car. I'd rather see a brighter color. You'd see a lot more of the accents and the, you know, you get the black trim on it, like you can get on the standard Stingray. I think that'll look, uh, I think that'll look really good. Maybe one day we'll see an orange one here. Now on to the new car inventory. These six Chevy Traxes just got delivered here this morning. So that actually makes a total of 20. We have 20 Chevy Trax models in stock. And that's 20 of the 67 vehicles total that we have. Yes, currently at 67 new cars in stock on our lot here at Schumacher Chevy Livingston. Of course, Schumacher Chevrolet has five stores, so I can always pull inventory from those other locations if they have something that I would need. This is the row of other tracks that we had. If you remember in recent videos, this row was actually doubled up, but we sold a whole bunch of them. And uh, now you can see more getting shipped in. So it's a constant flow of uh, cars going in and cars going out. Right now we have uh, six Chevy Equinoxes here. These are all the 2024 model. And very soon we should be ordering uh, the 2025 redesigned Equinox. And we also have uh, being built currently some Chevrolet Equinox EVs, which should be showing up hopefully within the coming months as well. In the recent weeks, we got a number of Colorados in, I would say about five or six maybe total. These two are still remaining. We have a black Trail Boss uh, edition here on the left and a white two wheel drive LT on the right. This past Monday, these two trail bosses showed up. We have one here in black and then one here in the sterling gray metallic. These are both the custom trim level. You can tell that by the big Chevrolet uh, nameplate in front rather than the Chevy bow tie. We had five, now we have six work truck, four wheel drive, single cab Silverados. Now these are all eight foot bed except for one. One is the standard six and a half foot box, which you can see there. It is the uh, middle one, the third one up from here. That's the one I like the best, the single cab standard box, or what most people call the short bed. Here we have an RST Silverado crew cab, a 2FL or an LT crew cab, and a custom in that slate gray, which is a really nice color. Kind of uh, very popular these days to have like this gray, you know, just like a battleship type gray uh, color on a lot of different vehicles. I've seen this with BMW, I've seen it with Audi, I've seen it with Ram. You know, a lot of manufacturers are using this color or a very similar color to this. Uh, you know, in recent years. Then we have one monster on the block here. This is a 2500 HD crew cab with the eight foot bed, 6.6 .6 liter gas engine. MSRP on this LT is a little over $63,000. This thing can do whatever you need it to do, man. Haul, pull your camper, pull your boat, pull whatever you may need to pull. 
this is the truck for you. While we're here at this end of the lot, let's update you on Wall Tree. I've gotten some comments recently with people asking who follow the channel and follow the Wall Tree, how's Wall Tree doing? Wall Tree's got growth. Now there's a lot of brown in the middle. It's sort of uh, shedded some needles throughout the winter, but on the ends of these uh, branches is all green growth coming in. So I'm gonna get some fertilizer spikes. We're gonna pop them in here and uh, this will be, let me think now. I took this tree out of the wall in November of 22. So November 23 was one year and now we're into April. So we're like a year and a half in to where I pulled this tree out of a, a concrete wall where it was growing out of a crack in the wall, planted it here and uh, still going. It's, uh, it's, it's surviving. I don't know if I would consider it thriving, but it's, it's definitely surviving. This is our section with trailblazers. I think I got like nine of them here right now. These are pretty readily available. You know, the trailblazer and the tracks are probably the two easiest vehicles for us to get at the moment. We do have four Chevy Malibus at the moment. Not the most popular vehicle we offer, but definitely nice to have a few here because there are buyers looking for these. This is our last 2024 limited traverse. It's a high country trim. We really can't wait to get the new 2024s in. We already sold a bunch of the ones that were being built. We did a bunch of factory orders and customers cannot wait to get that new body style traverse. It's gonna be awesome. One of the first ones we should have coming in is gonna be the RS, which is like the fully loaded model, super cruise, like everything you can get in a vehicle. So we're really excited to see that. Hopefully we start seeing those soon. We have them being built. It looks like they're just going into a storage lot and uh, they haven't shipped out as of yet. We recently got this in, it's a Suburban RST. It does have luxury, it has a sunroof. Really nice truck, uh, available at the moment. Then we have two Tahos. This is a white LS trim, which is the basic entry level model of the Tahoe. And this one is a Z71, also has luxury, has a sunroof. This we just swapped in. Somebody needed a vehicle from us and this is what we took back from them. These two trucks here, this Tahoe and Suburban, they won't last long, they'll go pretty quick. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about uh, Two vehicles here, we have a Blazer, which is the gas Blazer. This is a 3LT with the V6. Right next to it, we have our second Blazer EV. And this is gonna be one of the vehicle spotlights we're gonna talk about right now. But before we do that, let me update you on the Toyota Camry. So I put the car on Facebook Marketplace today. I went out, I took 17 photos of the car. Now these photos are kind of cut off. If I click on it, there you go, to show the full photo. Uh, you know, every angle, all that sort of stuff. When you are putting photos in uh, your vehicle online, there's the mileage, the engine. Uh, what I would recommend you do is actually block out the license plate. So if you look at these photos here, you can tell that I just kind of, within the phone's own software, I use like the paintbrush tool. I use the color finder to match the color of the plate. And then I just scribble over the plate. This way you, you don't see the license plate in any of the photos. But uh, in any event, I put it out there online. If I close this out, you'll see 2002 Toyota Camry LE sedan four-door. I put it on for $63.50. Now I pulled comps and I'll put them here on the screen for you. These are ones that are 2002. They're within like a 200 or 300 mile radius. And this is what's out there. And there's a lot out there that are like 49.95 or five or 6,000 in that range with a lot more mileage than this car. This car is one owner, no accidents low miles for its age, you know, that's 63.50 is a possibly a doable number on this car. And I put it online with a little description and this description basically says, low mileage, 8,521 miles as of this posting, 2002 Toyota Camry LE, one owner, no accidents, the Camry's engine runs smooth and quiet, transmission shifts great, AC glows cold, radio works, tires and brakes have very low miles on them, the oil was changed on October 11th of 2023 at 89, 923. This will make a great inexpensive vehicle for someone, buy it today. I thought that was a good little description. I got a bunch of photos on there. And within 15 minutes of posting this, I had about four or five people already asking, you know, is this available? Now, the first person asked if it's available. I said, yes, it is. They said, can I call you? What's your number? I looked, their Facebook page was created 11 minutes earlier. So like, I'm not giving my phone number out to anybody. What I did in that situation or what I recommend you would do is say, well, listen, what's your phone number? I'll call you. So that's exactly what I said. What's your number? I'll call you from my office line. They never responded to that. Another guy showed his interest. He lives right in East Hanover. It's a town next door. He's got a profile. It's got stuff on it. He seems like a human being. Uh, we went back and forth a little bit. He gave me his number, said, can you call me? I called him. He came down and looked at the car all that fast. Now I'm not doing this at Schumacher Chevrolet. So I brought the car around the corner, explained to him it's a private party sale. Let him hop in it. He drove it around. He likes it a lot. He asked what the lowest I can go is. I told him 6,000 figuring if I take six, that's cool. He wants to do 5,500, that's as much cash as he can as he can spare. And he gave me a little story of why and that sort of thing, which, you know, I, I could appreciate. I told him the six is what I was looking for. I just put it online 20, 30 minutes earlier. You know, I got the time to wait. He's like, oh, okay, I really like it, I really like it. I was like, can you do 58? He said no to 58. So at that point, I was like, listen, let me do this. I'll call you back. Let me, um, let me just see what other interest I get and I'll give you a call later today. 
So the question is, do we sell it to him for the 5,500? He said he's got the cash, he can bring it right here. Since he's left and I've come back, I've gotten about four more messages of people interested in the car. So 6,350 is drawing a lot of attention. I could probably hold out for more. I'll keep you posted on what I decide to ultimately do. It is really pretty cool that the Blazer EV does not have a push start. You just put your foot in the brake, it recognizes the key is in the vehicle and it starts it right up for you. You know, we are in a 2024 Blazer EV LT all wheel drive. This vehicle has a 279 mile estimated range per charge, MSRP. 50,195 and this vehicle does qualify for GM's Ultium Promise which is the $7,500 rebate. So you're getting it from GM, not from the federal government on this particular VIN number. So that brings MSRP to 42,695. And here in New Jersey, you still as of the upload of this video do not pay sales tax on that 42,695. So it's really saving you about another $2,800 that you would be paying on an equivalently priced gasoline vehicle. But we all know that's what EV's about. It's about saving money. That's why everyone buys them for the most part. Obviously the big thing that stands out in this vehicle when you first hop in it is the screens, right? So our driver information center here diagonally measures 11 inches. The media or infotainment screen here is 17.7 inches. Again, like I said in the past, I love the horizontal layout rather than the vertical. I think it just integrates to the, to the, the cockpit of the vehicle that much nicer. This is super fast. There's like zero delay. It's very, uh, very easy to use, obviously, because it's touchscreen. Everything's very big as far as the button. So when you're actually using it, um, you know, it, it's your you're navigating it very easily, especially if you're navigating things while you're driving down the road. Now you really don't have to do that because this has Google built-in, and if you're using Google built-in, you can just, hey Google, whatever you need, and it'll actually come up just like this, and you could uh, say whatever you want to say. This button right here in the steering wheel will change your driver information center to different screen layouts depending on what you like. This is obviously a very cool one because you can see Google Maps on here, uh, you know, nice and bright and right in front of you, your field of view, or of course you could also have it on the radio screen, the entire screen, like really nice, really fast. You can pinch zoom in, zoom out. You know, you can change your, your perspective. I mean, just very easy and very, again, fast. There's like zero delay in your movements on the screen, which is really nice. If you press the button again to click here, you have your driver aids. You have a kind of like a stealth screen where it just limits you to just some basic info. And then back to the beginning. It's just a really nice layout. And you know, you know how much I like the Chevrolet Bolt. What I like about this is the type of vehicle it is. You know, like if the Bolt was a gas car, I'd probably never buy it. You know, I would buy a gas Blazer because of the styling of it. And I would definitely buy an EV Blazer because it's got the, the drivability, the smoothness, the regen, the instant torque of the Bolt, of the electric powertrain. But it's in a, what I feel is a more cooler, fun and a, you know, a larger application. It's just a bigger car, you know, which, which I do like. I really also like the LT in the trim in this car. If you remember on the last one we had, it was the RS with the red interior, which a lot of people felt looked orange on camera. You know, here you're having just like a black interior, which is real nice. You know, you have um, some cloth sections, you have our Evo techs, you have some white accents, just a nice styled seat. Looks really good. You got some white stitching on the steering wheel here along the dash. And then even on your door, like it just has a more definite, more premium feel the way uh, the way it's all designed and the way it's all laid out. Another thing is obviously, because it's a bigger vehicle, you can have more room in the second row. So if I was to hop in the back here, you know, this is much more room than the Chevy Bolt for passengers. I got plenty of headroom, plenty of leg room. You do have your air vent, con uh, air vents, no controls, just the vents, a couple of USB C's and a pull down armrest with some cup holders in it. So real nice setup, real nice layout, uh, comfortable. And even from here, I mean, the screen just looks massive. I know it's off at the moment, but it's such a, uh, it's such a nice looking interior. I mean, what do you think? This has like an auto sensing rear tailgate when you walk back with the key. It just recognizes the key, I guess, and it'll open. I haven't had too much time to play around with it. It didn't obviously open now, it might be turned off. Uh, but yes, the buttons you can do obviously to power it, you can power it with the key, with the buttons up in the front, and you have a button here to close. Underneath you have no spare tires, so you have an inflator kit there on the left, charging stuff, extra hidden storage, things like that, underneath the bottom here. And on the outside, I really like it with the sterling gray metallic here. Again, the last one we had was the black one. I think the color actually shows more of the, you know, the angles in the, the accents of the vehicle. 
even when you look at the front end, you know, because you really don't have a, an open grill, you know, like you would normally have in a gasoline vehicle, just some small spots in the bottom and in the center. But, uh, you know, they really did a nice job laying everything out. Of course, you have LED lights and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really, uh, I'm really digging it. I think they should have put a black bow tie in this one, which we can probably always do. But I think there's definitely, uh, there's definitely gonna be a market for these. Again, it's not for everybody. And if you like the Blazer EV, you have a Blazer EV. If you don't like EV, you have a Blazer with gas. That's one of the great things Chevrolet decided to do in the past was do a gas version and an electric version. Who knows what the future will bring? There's, there's rumors and talks of hybrid versions coming back. So it'll really take time to see what GM and what these manufacturers decide to do and what sticks. And ultimately it's gonna be based on what you buy. You know, what vehicles sell is what vehicles they will ultimately produce.